Business Monday, everyone. You know, ever since this show began in the early 70s, as a summer replacement for the Brady Bunch, we were on top of one trend, cancel culture. The idea being if your past isn't adaptable to current standards, you would lose your friends, social status, Netflix password, and career. You'd be shunned from polite society. Its kindred spirit was wokeism, political correctness on more steroids than Lance Armstrong, which allowed no forgiveness relating not just to your past actions, but to who you are. Generally, it's things that can't be changed, like your race or Pete Davidson's bed sheets. In the world of the woke, you're either oppressed or the oppressor, and the offenses only flow in one direction. Suddenly, we no longer measure anyone by achievement, but by victim status, which creates a new kind of segregation that's now spreading like Omicron in the Olympic Village. I call it idea segregation, and that we cannot share our knowledge, wisdom, or ideas if we're not of the same tribe. Now, we see this with crime. This show has been blaring about rising crime like the alarm at a broken Nordstrom's window. But the people who need to hear it won't listen because it's coming from us. It's the fox crying wolf. They'd rather drown in raw sewage than grab a life preserver from us meanies. And I get it. It affects all issues, from the border to crime to COVID. It's a division of ideas, and none shall mix. Now, imagine if this kind of thing existed before we had a chance to make things. Like, did you ever wonder about how a pencil is made? Milton Friedman has. I certainly hope we have some grainy footage of him lying around we can play right now. The wood from which it's made, for all I know, comes from a tree that was cut down in the state of Washington. To cut down that tree, it took a saw. To make the saw, it took steel. To make the steel, it took iron ore. This black center, we call it lead, but it's really graphite, compressed graphite. I'm not sure where it comes from, but I think it comes from some mines in South America. This red top up here, the eraser, bit of rubber, probably comes from Malaya, where the rubber tree isn't even native. It was imported from South America by some businessmen with the help of the British government. This brass ferrule, I haven't the slightest idea where it came from, or the yellow paint or the paint that made the black lines, or the glue that holds it together. Literally thousands of people cooperated to make this pencil. Someone likes his weed. <laughs> so the moral is obvious. It's not like one person sits in a room and makes a pencil. As a, the lady in the pantsuit once said, it takes a village. Now you can use that pencil to write whatever you want or to gouge your eyes out if you're watching The View. But this is the case for everything we use today. It's the division of labor, which is not referring to twins being born more than 30 minutes apart, Kat. Oh. This clipboard right here, the chair I'm in, Kat's hair extensions, they all likely weren't made by a single entity, but a cooperation of sources, workers, ideas, and of course labor from people who never even met each other. I wish that was how this show was produced. Imagine if wokeism existed before the pencil was made. Could the division of labor exist? Think of the micro and macro aggressions. Why does the pencil have to be yellow? Why isn't it black? Are you black? Do you have enough transgendered persons of color making the erasers? <laughs> What's with the lead? Talk about a carbon footprint. And why number two? Why can't they all be equal? Fact is, nothing would happen because wokeism prevents cooperation needed for any shared labor. It wouldn't just be pencils, but everything you use. You have to work together whether you like it or not. And sometimes, you know, we have no choice. <laughs> Take the Alec Baldwin tragedy. If there wasn't idea segregation, that woman could be alive today because there would have been an NRA instructor on set, and that's cooperation, idea sharing. Sure, Baldwin, a Democrat, might not like the instructor's politics, but he's not there for that. He's there to share his safety expertise. And an NRA dude would have kept a loaded gun out of Baldwin's hands. Idea segregation prevents that. Wokeism demands you can't benefit from a person's expertise if they're not like you. The political is now personal. Sure, you're having engine problems with your car and your brother-in-law is a great mechanic, but he's got to back the blue sticker on his truck. Screw it, you'll just walk home. So now to Joe Rogan. There's likely no person on earth who's doing more to dismantle idea segregation than him. The roster of his guests are more diverse than the Olympic opening ceremonies, and they're allowed to speak endlessly about whatever so the listener can decide. It's the antidote to cable TV, where shows rely on the same people who say the same things over and over again. 
I mean, look at this show. You get 42 minutes of content divided by five segments and five talking heads. No wonder I'm on drugs. And no wonder CNN hates Rogan. He's widening the universe as they shrink it. At first, the legacy media tried to take him down with his COVID content. He had doctors on who disagreed with Fauci, the left's patron saint of masks, mandates, and mind control. But the takedown didn't take. So now some mysterious group released a supercut of Joe saying the N-word over a decade or so, probably matching what previous Democrat senators and presidents would say in the one afternoon. The fact that the montage was released after Spotify stuck with Rogan tells you it's less about the word and more about canning Joe. He's apologized, sincerely. But we all know, like me watching the first Magic Mike movie, that will never be enough. <laughs> the N-word is being used as a tool. They're getting desperate. They want Rogan destroyed. I wonder what the angry black male has to say. Greg, thank you for this time. This is not going to be your normal, everyday, angry black man. Oh, and I'm angry, but not for the reasons you might think. Yep, Joe Rogan said the N-word. Hell, he even said it with a hard-ass R. A bunch of times on a podcast. And yeah, it pissed me off when I first saw it. So, very clever, woke. But you kind of left out a few things, like it was 12 years ago. Nobody cares what he said 12 years ago. Hell, you didn't. Where were you then? I'll wait for a response, but we know that will fall on deaf ears. Maybe it's time you stop using us African Americans to do your dirty work and fight your battles. Now, I get it. You use your favorite little words to get us fired up. Racist, systemic, critical. And your new favorite word misinformation. And that'll get us fired up and we won't even look at the facts or the whatnots and we'll just jump in and cancel away with you. Your fight with Joe Rogan was about COVID, but you were losing that conversation. So you needed something else and you went right to the good old woke playbook. But you went one too many times. How about this? Fight Joe Rogan yourselves. Leave us out of it. Look, the N word is bad. I learned its meaning at four years old. That was the first time I was called a by a family member. And I've been called it enough times in my life to where I pretty much consider myself an expert on it. Now, I know it's going to be a news flash to you, woke, but us blacks, we understand the word context. Joe Rogan should keep that word out of his mouth. Hell, everyone should. He said it then, but you're saying it now for no other reason to cancel a man you can't compete with. And you know what? That sounds racist to me because that's usually when I was called it. I was winning the argument. So you had to pull that out of your bag of tricks because you couldn't compete. I think you just told on your woke selves. Now, I just may be an uppity <laughs> but that sounds a lot like, and I'll use one of your words, misinformation. That was some good stuff. Well, there you go. You don't have to agree with him, or you can. Either way, we get along like we always do, and he helps me and I help him. That's how it works in life, in making good pencils, making good TV, and making good friends. Let's welcome tonight's guest. She's all about love and deep spiritual connections. So what the hell is she doing here? <laughs> Former presidential candidate, author, and activist, Marianne Williamson. Yeah. Like most bucks, he was drawn to this show by the scent of deer urine. <laughs> Radio and podcast host, Buck Sexton. Yeah. Farmers see his clothes and ask if he'll help scare crows. Fox Across America host, Jimmy Failure. And she's always first to leave because her hair's due back by midnight. Fox <laughs> News contributor, Cat Tim. Marianne, I'm so excited to have you on the show. I've been waiting with bated breath. Thank you. I was such a fan. Well, you've been good to me. Thank I, you. I, well, you've been good to me. Thank you. We've been good to each other. <laughs> what are we doing later? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I saw a great tweet of yours. Do we have that? It was about Joe Rogan. I don't know. We never do call for us here because my eyes are so bad. So I can't even read that, but it says, <clears throat> I'm triple vaxxed, but unless they're standing for hate, 
or calling for violence, banning someone's podcast is too much like burning a book to me. Joe Rogan should talk on his podcast about whatever the damn thing he wants. I kind of read what I could. Do you still <laughs> feel that way? Yes, I do. Yeah. What do you make of this climate where like people are just using whatever weapon they can to get take people out? Well, I think nobody has a monopoly on truth. And I think a free society is where many voices chime in. Mm -hmm. And I think um, we all need to listen to each other more than jump to judge each other and condemn each other mm -hmm. and shut each other down. Mm -hmm. And I don't think either side of the political spectrum uh, should be too self-congratulatory on this. Right. Uh, I think we all need to self-regulate right now. Mm -hmm. um, I think that things on a certain level have gone too far. Mm -hmm. People are talking about how we're sort of already in a state of emotional and psychological civil war. Mm -hmm. And I think all of us are having to find that place where we want to passionately say what we believe, but also be somewhat careful. Mm -hmm. So I think Joe Rogan, I agree with what you said. I believe that he was honest and sincere in his apologies. Mm -hmm. I believe that the angry black man uh, mm -hmm. tape that we just heard, I think there's context. Mm -hmm. And I think if people really want to talk about racial issues in America, the issue is not Joe Rogan. The issue is Amir Locke and the Minneapolis Police Department and the killing of black men uh, by police. Uh, Americans needing to ask ourselves, if we're supporting s the Saudi government, in a genocidal war in Yemen, would we be willing to do that if those people in Yemen were white? There are serious issues of race to talk about right now. Joe Rogan is not one of them. Got it. That's my opinion. You know, I'm glad you wore that jacket, uh, <laughs> Jimmy. Uh, that's probably the real crime. <laughs> you know, I would. Are you going to apologize for that jacket? <laughs> <laughs> this could bring me down. Every day, every time you're here, you just shock me with the things that you wear. Well, there's never, there's no, there's no, re there's no repeats. No, no it's that's not just a, a bad jacket. That's you the weird so thing. It's like bad jacket. I got range, and I would normally come through now with like a snarky reply. But as a parent, mm -hmm. it's just so refreshing to see a small child without a mask. Oh. <laughs> I just just a note to the just good. a note to my staff that's sitting in the audience that are laughing. <laughs> you laugh when I make a joke. <laughs> Don't laugh take when he. Yes. Take that. I just Stacey Abrams your classroom. Uh, <laughs> you verbed her. You know, so what are your you thoughts know. if you have any on anything from the pencil well, or the no, no, this, this whole thing, all right, it's so many points here. Okay, first of all, Tyrus is brilliant in saying they don't care about the use of the N-word. They don't, they don't care. They care now. It's expedient right now because he's in the way of their COVID narrative. Yeah. Okay, but understand that's why they care. It's yeah. the same reason why, like, a Jimmy Kimmel and a Jimmy Fallon are always siding with the regime, because if they didn't, they'd get fired, because suddenly them wearing blackface for other, at other points in their career would become viable and it would become a liability for them. But the thing that drives me crazy, really quick, is I'm so sick of this idea that comedians and even podcast hosts like Rogan, who's also a comedian, should be subjected to the same standards of language as like elected officials. Like the whole point of being a comedian, that was the bargain is that you didn't have to take life seriously. Right. You spend 22 hours a day smoking weed and watching dirty <laughs> movies in a La Quinta. You yeah. didn't sign up for senatorial scrutiny, but here we are. No, that is that is so true. And it drives me crazy when like the, the bozos at CNN like equate like, Watching like a four, this is a four-hour podcast where at least fifty percent of the people there are high. They're stoned the whole time. Or yes, <laughs> and it's like and it's like suddenly you're holding this like standard that you would for I don't know uh, Edward R. Murrow. Thank you for that. I just <laughs> that just popped into my head. But nobody can actually sustain these standards or even define what they are over the long term. I mean, it, yeah. you could you could even look at this as revolutionary mob mentality, right? Ask Robespierre in the French Revolution, ask everybody who worked around Stalin until they didn't anymore when the Bolsheviks <laughs> took power. The reality here is that nobody can actually be pure enough to withstand the constantly shifting mechanism of who gets canceled. And on the comedian front, by the way, I think a lot of people have gone super woke because they're afraid if they don't, they need to create a kind of insurance policy for themselves. Mm -hmm. Jimmy Kimmel, as Carl Malone, Howard Stern, as a whole bunch of things back right. in the day, different sketches and things that were done. When you look at the realities of who is getting canceled and who's not, all that matters right now is that the left-wing apparatus wanted to silence Joe Rogan, and they found a reason. They didn't even wait very long, right? They wanted to silence him on the issue of COVID, right. and so they went back and they did the deep dive and they found the stuff. But they could do this on so many people. Mm -hmm. And if they actually did it on a lot of people, I think, right now, who are calling them out, guess what? You'd find they don't withstand the wokeness either. Don Winslow, the author that came out uh, against Joe, and somebody took all of the 
pages from yeah. his book where he uses the N-word and just posted them on Twitter. It was quite interesting, Kat. Two questions. Do you remember the weekend? And how was it? <laughs> you mean like Saturday and Sunday? Yes. <laughs> yes. And it, it was it was all right. Good. That's good. Some highs and lows. Yes. Uh, is, is that it? That's I mean, it. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. No, you can also address the topic. Oh, There's sure. There's so many things in that to in that brilliant monologue. I wouldn't know what to ask you. That is my struggle right now. <laughs> um, yeah. Look. I, I again. He. Seems sincere in his apology, and he's sorry. And just like I said, with Whoopi, with everyone, you forgive and you move on. Because, mm -hmm. again, everyone says stupid stuff. People like Joe Rogan or like Whoopi are talking, having conversations on a camera, on a podcast, and he's doing it, like, hi, a lot. Yeah. You're gonna, there's, that's going to be there. And if what people say they want who are progressive is they want to have these conversations so we can learn from each other about, you know, issues such as race. The last way to do that is to say that because somebody has made mistakes, even if they are sorry and they do learn from it, that th they can no longer have a job ever again. Yeah. Crazy. Absolutely. What, one quick novel idea, though, really, seriously. Yeah. If you wanted to get anywhere as a country, how about instead of going after stoner podcast hosts for discussing COVID remedies, we actually take a look at the genocidal communist regime who gave it to us? Mm. Is it not amazing that Rogan gets more scrutiny than China? <laughs> like, it's fascinating. They have to be dying laughing right now. Well, because the people that are supposed to have scrutiny on China, whether we're talking about CNN or whoever else, there's actually a lot of envy around Joe Rogan right yeah. now. That's the reality. I mean, I don't mean in this current situation, but I mean yeah. well, you got what he has mil built. He eight million, eight million viewers he, a day. He, he is crushing in yeah. terms of relevance all these other legacy platforms. And given, I mean, CNN comes to mind because of what they've just gone through with Zucker. But you see what's going on yep. in the digital space in general. And the left is losing people to Rogan as well. That's why they were so upset. He was speaking somewhat from within the tent. Which is com that, that's what's that's apostasy for them. That's why it's so inexcusable. Don't use words I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, what show do you think this is? Gosh. Gosh. <laughs> I, my bad. Yeah. By the way, I do I do like this. This is you know standing in solidarity with Bulgarian nightclub owners. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> Everywhere. All right. Thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.